we get into US goods returned. Um, and one thing that I wanna call attention to specifically within US goods returned and then um, is, is, and you can correct me here if I'm wrong, Pat, but I think it was two or maybe two or so years ago, um, there's a big change to that chapter 9801 HTS, right? The, the description used to, to very clearly say, um, U.S. goods returned, as in goods that were made in the United States, shipped abroad, and then came back in. Um, and, and they made a change to the description there, and, and they added the words that it also includes goods that were previously imported with respect to which duty has been paid without the benefit of drawback. So basically what there's what they're saying in there is that if you have imported an item from, let's say, China, at some point, you have sent it back overseas because something needed to get done to it as far as maybe there needs to be some repair work done overseas because you sent it back for warranty or you've shipped it out of the country for something that didn't meet client spec, it's coming back in, you know, with the, the, the new verbiage in there, you don't have to pay duties potentially on that stuff that's coming back in. And I think that's a big change that, I mean, you and I see each other a lot every year and, you know, at, at different national events. And I feel like this is a change in the tariff that went relatively unreported. Yeah, you know, it's funny how some of these things can fly under the radar, but you're right. Um, I'm not sure. I, I don't recall seeing uh, very many announcements about it other than the, the notice changing the tariff. Uh, again, but like a lot of these things, um, it, what, it takes on a new importance with this trade war we're in. And mm -hmm. it's not just a trade war with China. You know, we're in a trade war with a lot of companies and commodities, for example, steel and aluminum. Um, so things that might not have been that big of a deal several years ago now become such a big deal. You know, your products that you shipped out to China might have been duty free when this was put into place. Um, now the, the provision is still duty. The products would still be duty free, but now it's a, it's a 25% addition on top of it by virtue of going to China. Right. And so I think, you know, I think as, I think this, you know, we, we've had these conversations before and it was always one of those things that people, I don't think, you know, they're like, it's just such a small amount of money that it's not worth maybe jumping through additional regulatory or compliance hoops in order to maybe take advantage of some of these. And, and as much as we like or don't like where we are tariff wise, I, I do think section 232, section 301 has really opened the eyes to a lot of our, um, a lot of our importers that say, well, maybe now is a good time to take a look again, because just like you referred to, you know, I was paying zero duties and now I'm paying 25%. You know, I, I have a great example of a, of a 232 client that during that time they imported steel in the uh, 2000, if you were to look at, let's say 2017 as a whole, I think they paid just shy of a hundred grand in duties because it was all just fees. And then you turn around and you look at what 25% does to them and it puts them in the $8 million range. And now all of a sudden you start to look at that and you say, how does that impact my bottom line? Um, so and by the way, there's very little okay. warning here. I mean, orders are placed, sometimes orders are placed months or even a year in advance. And these tariffs came along fairly quickly and people are left scrambling. Right. Um, a question just came in, 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 in regards to 9801. So, so let's kind of talk through this is, Here's the example, and I think this is where it's really hitting home, is that you have, a, you have an item that you originally imported two years ago. Four months ago, before Section 301 hit your product, you exported it because you needed something to get done. Now it has to come back, it has to come back into the US. You know, the product maybe didn't meet spec, something happened. Are we paying 301 against that US goods return tariff? Yeah, ordinarily, without the use of 9801, you know, if you imported that product and it's on one of the tariff codes that's hit by the, the applicable tariffs, you would have to pay. So 9801 might be a very good solution for you where you'd have to pay uh, for, you know, whatever repairs or additions you made to the product. Um, or, or if it was none, duty-free. That's what I would argue. And, and I think 
there is an FAQ out there where Customs says, with the exception of a handful of provisions in 98, Chapter 98, it, it's all exempt from 301. Correct. Um, no, and so I think, you know, I think that's a large part. And because that flew under the radar, I don't feel like a lot of people even realize that that is a viable option now because it didn't really used to be. And it's not that it didn't use, it just wasn't really publicized. And now we actually have the language and the tariff to really use this as another tool to bring things back in. 